Descriptive statistics. There are three main functions in here that will give you descriptive statistics. Plus, whenever you run any kind of test, like a t-test or ANOVA or a regression, the first box out will be a descriptive statistics box that usually has the mean and the standard deviation because that's the king and queen of statistics. But let's let's do some descripting. We're going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics. So the top three, Frequencies, Descriptives, Explore. They're all used to get descriptive statistics. I'm going to do one each real quickly. So let's take Frequencies. And let's say I wanted just the mean and the standard deviation of Homework 1. So I click in the variable. I click Charts. And I just want the mean and the standard deviation. But look at all the other options they have here, right? Click Continue, Charts. Uh, if I wanted bar graphs or something, but since they're not grouped by, by groups, the bar graph would be out of the question, so I'm going to leave that out. Format, don't care, style, don't care, bootstrap. Um, we never bootstrap here. Bootstrap is for people that are desperately seeking significance. Okay, so don't use bootstrap. You can click OK. Frequency tables, sure, why not? So this tells you how many are missing, 0 out of 18. There's the mean of the data, standard deviation of the data. Okay. And that's about it. Okay. That's the frequencies. Now let's move on to the next one. Go back to Analyze. Descriptive Statistics. Descriptives. And I don't know. Let's say I want uh, a couple of uh, important pieces of information from the fraction test and the percent test. Okay. So I hit shift, click, that gets all three of them, made a mistake, control, get that one out. Okay. So if they're highlighted, they're ready to go, bam. So just check every button. Options. This is what the computer thinks is important. The mean, standard deviation, minimum, maximum. I'm going to click the range. I know that the variance is simply the standard deviation squared, so I'm not going to put that in there. Kurtosis and skewness, this one is not the real, the best option to show um, kurtosis and skewness. We're going to do that on the next one, but keeping going, put them in alphabetical order, whatever you want to do. Okay, click continue. So you see this little tiny box here? It's very important. It allows you to save the standardized values as variables. In other words, it will turn every one of your pieces of data into a Z-score, a standardized score from that data set. And that has many, many applications. The big one is it, it can tell you if, it, if a piece of data is an outlier or something, right? So very important. Not going to do it here. Click OK. And there's your statistics. In, sample size, range, minimum, maximum, mean, standard deviation. And it will do them for as many as you want. Okay, last one we're going to do is called Explore. Analyze Descriptives Explore. This is the one I use most frequently. So I'm just going to stick them all in there. I'm going to go and choose what I want to show. I want to show the descriptives. I don't use the estimators or outliers here. They're not they're not always accurate, and the percentiles I can get later if I want. So just use the default here. Plots. Uh, we don't use stem and leaf plots here anymore, but we do use the dreaded histogram, so that'll indicate normality or not. They're not always accurate either, according to this thing. But this, this one right here is the main one that I use. This will check... Uh, the normality of your data using the Kolmogorov hyphen Schmirnoff test or the Shapiro hyphen Wilkes test. Both of those are used to check normality of data sets and don't care about the rest of that stuff. Uh, options gives you the chance to exclude. That's something else. Bootstrap we never use. Click OK. So you get a much bigger data set when you do the explore option okay this is tells you how many are missing and here's the descriptive so here's the first one the mean is 2.11 standard error is that it has every piece of information 
that the SPSS people think is important. Now, if you don't know the name, if you don't know the values of these things, perhaps you should go learn them because this is an advanced statistics class. So we're expecting you to know what everything is here. But you got uh, first variable, second variable, third variable, fourth variable, fifth variable, sixth variable. Now, here's the normality test. So if the kolmogorov smirnov test is significant value, same as p-value, is less than 0.05, it rejected normality. I am. So it looks like you got two that did. The percent test and the homework test barely, you know, just barely by one thousandth. And that's according to kolmogorov smirnov and Shapiro. Oh, and the instructor, sorry. Shapiro, it is the instructor and... Homework one, these two, these two. Okay, so a lot of times these things will agree. A lot sometimes they won't. One is supposed to be for a huge sample size. One is not. But um, honestly, you guys, different books say different things. So just what I tell people is just pick the one you want. Okay, that is it for descriptive statistics. MGZ out.